Hey guys, Malkuth1974 coming at you with a little tutorial on how to get a space vessel in Kerbal Space Program into space, or how to orbit with a pretty simple design. Empty little thing here, there's nothing here, so we need to add a command pod. So we want to add the command pod mark one. This is a uh, one crew operated command pod. Uh, to click on anything, you just left click on it and you can move it around, move it up and down and everything. But we just want to move it up. So the best way to move things up is with the scroll key. So just move the scroll key up and you can go just like that. Left click again, we'll let go of it. What we need to add is one of the most important pieces to this whole puzzle, which is a parachute. I use the Mark 16 parachute. Now I'm going to go into structure, and I'm going to grab what's called a decoupler, a TR-18A decoupler. What the decouplers do is it separates two rockets from each other for you can basically lose anything that's under this. Next thing we want is we need the control tab, and we need to add advanced SAS. Advanced SAS is helps you, uh, it's basically your autopilot for the, for the game. You push T in the game on the nav ball, and it will keep your orientation at that way. Uh, so we need to actually add propulsion to our system and what we're going to want to do is we want to have our orbital propulsion set so we'll grab the FLT200 fuel tank. It's one of the smallest fuel tanks. Just place it right there and then you want to grab the LV909 liquid fuel engine and place that right there. All we need is another decoupler so go back to structures Add another, de add another decoupler to it, and now we need to go back to propulsion. And what we need to grab is the FLT400 fuel tank. No, actually, we'll grab the FLT800 fuel tank. These are better for this. We need two of them. If you notice, I added a decoupler there, too, so under the engine. There we go. Now we want to add an engine to the bottom of this, which we're gonna we're gonna grab the LV T30. All right. Now I need to go back to structure or structures and grab the TT38K radial decoupler. Now I'll just place it one for right now, right there. Go back to propulsion, and I want you to grab the RT10 RT10 solid fuel booster. Now, what will happen a lot of times, right now it's working, well actually it's not, okay. If you can't put the, th uh, it's a bug in the game right now, if you can't place it, all you need to do is go place it on the rocket, rocket to rocket like that, it'll turn it green, and then take it off, and you'll be able to place it. So we're going to place it just like that. You want to double check to make sure it's connected to the radial decoupler. We're all good. So now all I want you to do is to grab the decoupler, you'll see it turn green, hit the left mouse button and it'll rip it off. What we're going to do is we're going to place it back on and you're going to hit the X key. What that does is it'll add down here in symmetry mode one more of these tanks. So every every time you build a rocket you want you want the symmetry to be uh, exactly or your rocket will be on balance. So in this one we're only going to add two. You could add more if you add more weight to this later down the road it would uh, you can add more to help it get into space. So basically, almost everything is ready to go here. Just grab utility, go, uh, me, uh, go to structure, one more thing, we need to add one more thing, and go to TT18A. These are, uh, these will help hold our, uh, vessel in, and go like that. Now, we want to move the whole vessel down a little bit to make it look a little bit better. So all you gotta do is hold the shift key, and then left click, and that'll grab everything in the vessel. All apart. So you can move it up and down, or you can move it anywhere you want. So we'll bring it down pretty close to the floor and we are all good but we are not all good. What we need to do is make sure that our staging is correct. Now how this is going to go off is that these are going to lift us off first and then they're going to go a certain height and they're going to run out and we're going to want to decouple them and then this engine is going to go off and it's probably going to bring us to orbit because it's plenty enough to bring us to orbit and then but in theory, I'm doing this for you guys have plenty of wiggle room in case you mess up. Uh, when this runs out, you hit the space bar again, which will decouple it right here. And then you'll just have your orbiter. And then when you're, you're ready to deorbit, come back to the Earth, you're going to want to decouple this part for all you have is this and the parachute. So we got to make sure this is all set up and all correct. So right now, 
these will how this uh, staging works. If I push spacebar right now, these would uh, these clamps would fall off, and the thing would just fall to the ground because the engines haven't fired. So we want these to be with these uh, solid fuel b boosters. Next, we want these boosters to disconnect, but we want the engine to fire at the same time. So we want these together. So the engine and these will disconnect. If I uh, go on the radio decouplers, that means they'll disconnect. And then next, up here, where I messed up in the beginning, is that this will disconnect. And then we don't want this to be disconnecting too, so we want to bring the engine down to staging two. So these disconnect at the same time. And then we'll just have this engine going, and we'll be all set, and we'll be able to fly. Fly like a, fly like a bird. So I'm going to save this as that. I'm going to make sure I got everything. Parachute, that, we're all set. There, set, set, set. Good, let's launch this thing. Okay, now we're on the launch pad. Now, the first thing I want you to do is hit the T key, which will set our SAS. Anytime you want to move the vessel while it is in, uh, um, while it's flying, you just hit the T key and it'll turn on. You can't move it when it's on, but you can move it when it's off. Uh, to control the engines, or actually these engines, but actually this engine, I want you to hit the shift key, which will uh, make it uh, give you the throttle. Uh, throttle it up. Uh, control key will throttle you down and then shift key will throttle you up and then the X key will instantly shut it off. So but right now we want it all the way throttled up because when we hit the next staging up here on stage uh, this stage we want this engine to fire. It won't fire when we first fire it, it will be these two. So pretty much all set. All we need to do is hit the space bar and we will be off. So five, four, three, two, one, space bar. Now you might get a little rotation in here with this rocket. It's okay. Uh, when these run out, we want to we want to hit the space bar and it'll turn these on. So, but also up here is our uh, our height, our height in meters. So right now we're at 2,000. When this hits 10,000, we want to start what's called the gravity turn, and you want to start your gravity turn on the 90 degree angle. So remember where that is. There we go. We lost our staging. Now it tends to, like I said, it tends to, you can fix it by going uh, with the E key. If you want to keep your, uh, if you want to keep your uh, orientation, if not, it'll spin. So just make sure you shut off SAS. So to shut it off, you hit the T. Or you can hit the F key, which will allow you to uh, do uh, minor corrections while you're actually using uh, uh, the W, S, A, and D key to move things around. So we are at 9, now we're at 10. So we'll bring her down. I hit the F key. We're on, we want to go right on that 90 degree. There we go. And then the SAS will correct us if we want. Um, technically, you want to control your speed in here, but uh, this, is this rocket is plenty, so it doesn't really matter. Um, when you get more in-depth at uh, actually making this, you want to control your uh, your throttle settings when you're going up, and you can uh, look at the wiki to find out what your throttle settings should be. But basically, you don't want to be fighting uh, gravity uh, the the gravity with going too fast. You can actually go too fast out of the atmosphere, is what I'm trying to say. So I went into map view, and I brought this up. Now I can control my ship from here. What we want to do is we want to level this out a little bit because we don't want to have too steep of a uh, an orbital. We want the incline to be a little bit less for we don't have to uh, work at it so much. I'm already almost in space, which is pretty amazing. Like I said, this rocket is way too much for, you know, it's not very uh, standardized. I'm going to get to 100 meters, which I'm going to just follow this. Keep falling it. We're at 92, 97, and 100. There we go. Now I'm going to show you I still have plenty of rocket left. And this is not very efficient uh, for uh, what we're doing. Uh, we're only orbiting, but this rocket could probably actually lift a little bit more. But uh, yeah, we won't even get into that. Just 
Just, just if you want to get into space, this is the way to do it. So what we need to do now, we're still not in orbit. What's going to happen if, is that we're going to basically come back up here until our highest point, which is called the Apoapis. And we're going to go fall back to the Earth. So we need to set an orbit. So what you need to do is add a maneuver node right here at the AP. It stands for Apoapis. It's the highest point in the orbit. You want to add a maneuver. And you want to, this is called the prograde. And this is called the retrograde. It's the same thing on the nav ball. I'll go over that. So we want to add some prograde to it. We want to get this. It's a little bit too high. Still a little bit too low. It's kind of touchy. It doesn't have to be perfect. 101, 101. There we go. So what happens when you add that <clears throat> is you get this little blue marker. I'll just hit the T key to shut off your SAS where you can actually move your vessel around. And you want to put your vessel on that little blue key, that little blue thing, and then hit SAS again. Now to be efficient, because we don't want to litter the um, litter the world with our garbage from our our stages, I'm going to destage this part right here. This would actually be a bad idea. I'm just doing it for this to show you guys. If I destage it now, it's going to fall back to the Earth and it won't be stuck in orbit like this one is. So hit the shift key, and that stage is gone, and we have still plenty of rocket in here to actually do what we need to do and this will fall back to the earth and we won't have to worry about litter in the game. So we're going to wait until we get to this. You can hit the uh, period key or the uh, comma key to actually get to this quicker if you want. But I'm going to show you something. Right here you have your uh, how much uh, meters per second we have to go to uh, actually do our orbit. Uh, down here, every time you do your node, this stuff will pop up. Down here it says your estimated burn, which will technically be off because I did this when I had my bigger thing, but don't worry about that. And then this shows our node when we're going to hit. So make sure your node is on. I'm going to just adjust it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's just a little thing. And right now, at 10 seconds, I'm going to start my burn. And the reason for that is because uh, the node system is based off uh, an instant change in velocity. And unfortunately, the game doesn't work that way. So you want to start your burn between halfway of what the estimated burn is. So if it's at one minute, you want to start it at 25 seconds. If it's at two minutes, you want to start it at a minute. So that's the best way to get a clear burn. And as you can tell, there are uh, little lines coming up here. And now we can see the PE. That stands for a periapsis. And then you hit the X key. will stop you from actually going any farther. Like I said, the shift key gives you throttle, the control key will lower your throttle, and the X key will instantly shut it off. That way you don't miss things when uh, you want to get there quick. And now we have an orbit around the planet Kerbin. We got the AP, which is Apoapis, which is the highest point in the orbit. And we got the PE, which is the Periapis, which is the lowest point in the orbit, which is 100. And the highest is 101. So it's actually a very good orbit we have here. And you want to look at uh, you want to look at Kerbin. We're actually going to the night side, which is good because I'm going to show you the next part. Uh, the sun. You can hit F2 to get rid of the the UE, and then F1 will take pictures for you. Let's see if we can get a good picture going. F1. Ah, all right. Uh, if you want to mess with the Kerbal, you can uh, click on where the crew hatch is, and then you can hit EVA, and he'll pop out. Sometimes he'll be connected to the thing, and if he's uh, holding on to the stairs, you can just hit the shift key and he'll let go. And if you hit the R key, we'll actually uh, put his jetpack on so you can move him around. Uh, left, it's, it's basically the same thing. Left will make him go left, right will make him go right. The only difference is when you push up, it'll make him go forward. If you push back, it'll make him go back. The shift key makes him go up, and then the control key makes him go down. So we want to put him back in there. He's having fun. Jebediah. Jebediah is having fun. Alright, so when you come to it, you'll see these uh, little markers come on. It says the F, so just hit the F and he'll attach himself to the ladder. Then hit it again if it says board, and he will board it. Hit F2 to bring the GUI back up. And now I'm going to deorbit this. I want to deorbit this in. I want to make sure I come in the light before we can actually see us deorbiting. Darkness in this game is pretty dark now. They fixed it in 19.1. So anytime you want to land here, 
you're going to want to start your burn at the opposite point of it. So luckily our PE and our AP is set, but it might not be the same for you, so just remember that. If, if you want to be in the light side, you're going to have to deorbit in the dark side. You want to get used to deorbiting uh, at a pretty uh, pretty shallow rate because they just added uh, uh, re-entry, but right now the actual heat won't hurt you. But eventually they're going to have the heat that hurts you. So you're going to want to practice being uh, a little bit more... Uh, let me get rid of this. A little bit more uh, conservative on your re-entry, so you might as well do it now since it's going to be added. You don't want to have any bad habits. So what I want to do is I want to actually hit the retrograde button, which is right here. And you can bring it down like that, and that will deorbit us. What it brings that little line down, and it will come out probably around there. Actually, you probably be more like that which will work for us. But I'm going to show you how to do it without doing anything. So without using the node system. So on our uh, nav ball, hit the T key to get rid of the SAS. We already have uh, the uh, prograde, which is the circle without anything in it. It kind of looks like a target thing with the two lines outside it. We got the prograde, which is right there. And on the very exact opposite end of this, um, if you go, you cut it in half, you'll go all the way over here. You have what, oh, don't go by it. Oh, jeez. You have the retrograde, which has a little X inside it, and the lines are a little bit different. So in this particular moment, we want to deorbit, so we want to do a retrograde, which will bring us closer to the planet Kerbin. Prograde will bring us away. It's, it's, you'll get used to this stuff. I, I'm not going to explain all this stuff how it makes. Just trust me. If you want to deorbit, you need to have to do retrograde. I want to deorbit. I'm going to wait till I hit the AP. I'm going to wait a little bit longer. We're on the dark side. We lost our retro. That's okay. We'll just put it back on there. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt to get it on there because it's so touchy. All right, so we're gonna hit the shift key and we're gonna get our. We're gonna start bringing it up now. I want to slow down a little bit. As you can tell, it's falling. There we go. As you can tell, we're here now. Say you want to, uh, you you went too far. You want to fix that. All you need to do is go to the prograde. Hit the shift key. You can tell it actually adds some to it. So there we go. Now, just for habit, when we start deorbiting, you're going to always want to be pointing at retrograde, your ship, because again of how uh, uh, orbital burn, when you re-entry, re-burn, you want to always have your back end, because theoretically, you'd have a, um, a heat shield to help protect your vessel from uh, being burned up. Now, I'm just going to pretend that it's a heat shield, say the engine is the heat shield, it's going to protect the rest of this, and we're going to use the engine to uh, enter the atmosphere. So just hit the period key to fast forward a little bit. We should be coming into a sunrise here in a second. Oh, beautiful. Yep, there we go. And we are starting to deorbit now. We're at 66. We already left the orbit. Oh, by the way, a curve in orbit is 70 kilometers, so always remember that. Uh, we should start burning up around 30, 31,000 kilometers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fast forward this a little bit. Oh, by the way, if you're in the atmosphere and you can't push, uh, you, you can't use your, uh, uh, your time acceleration key, if you hit the alt key, and the uh, the period key that will call that will cause what's called a physical time warp, which means everything in the game is still being generated, like all the physics. So you can go up to uh, times four physical time warp. And if uh, regular time warp, if you hit it, what it will do is it will it'll cancel out all uh, all physical uh, things. So basically, it's not. You don't have any physics in the game, so it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing. But I want to get to 35. 
and then I'll take I'll get out of this uh, I'll go to 33 I know this isn't burning up yet because I'm not going fast enough all right I want to set this back up you don't have to do this but again I'm just trying to teach you guys to get uh, a little accustomed to uh, the re-entry heat stuff as you can tell I'm already uh, heating up a little bit and when you're at retrograde it'll you'll you'll be exactly at the point you want to be for it doesn't you know totally this won't hurt you because they don't have the heat effects and yeah they have only the visual effects and I'm coming in in a shallow enough uh, a shallow enough orbit that it's not going to be too too heavy on us in all reality this should all burn up if because these aren't really heat shields, but I'm just pretending that it is a heat shield. Wee, Jebediah's in there. He's all happy. Oh yeah, Jebediah is always happy. You can tell that this still has tons of fuel, so this could technically make it to the moon, I guess. There we go, we have our staging set. What we're going to do is once the flames run out, I'm going to, you don't have to do it this way, but I'm just showing you. If we had a heat shield at this point, we could lose it. And now our thing is falling. We want to put our parachute out. So just hit the space bar one more time and our parachute will pop out. Looks like we're going to have a water landing, which is going to cost the Kerbals lots of money to send the Navy out there to get us. But that is all good. Now, the thing with physical time acceleration is that you do not want the parachute, this parachute, particular parachute opens up at 500 meters. And we're over sea level right now, so the, the, this is actually correct. The, this is, uh, this whole me meter system is based off, uh, of the sea level. But if we were over land, it might not be correct, so let's just keep that in mind. But when, uh, this hits 500, this is going to open up and it's going to slow us down considerably. You do not want to be in time acceleration when uh, these open up. It tends to rip the parachutes off. It causes all kinds of problems. So just make sure you're not in physical time acceleration when that opens up. I'm going to, just to be sure, I'm going to shut it down right about here. Jebediah is all happy. We got 800, 700, 600, 500, bam, opens up. And now we're coming down. Now you can do physical time acceleration. We bring it to the water. Jebediah, the first man in space. He's all happy. 200, 100, 90. Shut off acceleration. I don't, I don't really like to hit the ground at time acceleration. And we are going to hit the water right there. And we're alive. We brought everybody home. Everybody is safe. As always, guys, this is Malkoof1974. Hopefully this gets you into space. Uh, we'll see you later. And have a good day.